Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about solving these two problems using the distributive property. So, as I say with many of my videos, if you want to pause it, try these out, see if you can solve it on your own, and then come back to check your work, by all means, do so. But we're going to jump right into uh, going ahead and seeing how these problems work out. So let's take a look at number one here. As you recall, the distributive property states that whenever we have a number outside, or a, a term, whatever it may be, variable, not variable, that kind of thing, on the outside of a set of parentheses, it can distribute or multiply into all of the terms inside of the set of parentheses that it is outside of. So what will happen is this negative three is going to multiply both of these terms. And we're gonna be able to simplify the expression by simply making it the products of these two multiplications. So this negative three is going to distribute to or multiply with the two x. As you recall, the whole numbers will multiply and then any variables there will multiply as well. So negative three times two is going to get us negative six, and we just have one x here. So we're just gonna have one x after they multiply. That's kind of the easiest way that works for me for thinking about that whenever I'm multiplying with variables. Now we'll take a look at our second multiplication that has to occur, where the negative three distributes to the five. Negative three times a positive five is gonna get us negative 15. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I include my sign in whenever I'm writing down the product to that multiplication so that I can have that sign or that operation in the resultant expression. So ultimately, what I end up getting after distributing my negative three is negative six x minus 15. And there we go. I've distributed, I succeeded. Let's take a look at number two. Number two is a little different. It's a little more complex on a couple of different fronts. One, the number on the outside, or the term I should say, is not only a whole number in the four, but it also has a variable attached to it. So it's four x. So that's kind of an added layer of complexity there. In addition to that, we don't just have two terms inside the parentheses next to it, we have three. So there's another step. So let's think about how this would work. This is still going to multiply or, or distribute. Uh, we just have to make sure we multiply the whole number and the variable as well. Both of those multiplications need to happen. And then whenever we're uh, talking about how it will change by having three terms inside the parentheses, it just means we have one more number to distribute to. The fact of the matter is, whether there are two numbers, three numbers, or 50 numbers inside those parentheses, the number on the outside will distribute to every single one of them, every time. We don't just skip the third or skip whatever one. Every single number will be and must be distributed to. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The four is going to first distribute to the first term, two y. So whenever we're multiplying two numbers, both the variables, again, the whole numbers are gonna multiply. Four times two, that'll give us eight. And then the variables are also going to multiply, but multiply is probably a misleading term for what exactly happens here. We are just going to see these variables be written together with the eight, x, y. Now, is that multiplication? Absolutely it is. So it's not misleading in the sense that they aren't multiplying. It just seems a little misleading because that looks a lot simpler than multiplying them, quote unquote. Usually, whenever we multiply things, we're creating something entirely brand new. Just like the four and the two, well, they became a brand new number, eight. But whenever we multiply variables like this, x times y, while x, y is a brand new term, 
it doesn't look brand new necessarily. So that's why I, I talk about the, the misleading thought of multiplication. It's not really nearly as hard as it actually looks like it is. Next up, the 4x, though, is going to multiply the 3z. So again, the whole numbers, 4 and 3, are going to multiply, making 12. And it is a positive 12. We want to be sure to write that sign. And then x and z are going to multiply, making xz. Finally, the 4x is going to multiply the negative 5. 4 times negative 5, always remember, the sign right before the number has to go with it, makes negative 20. And then this one, we only have one variable. We only have that x right here. So it's going to just get written right alongside that negative 20, negative 20x. And this is our distributed version of the expression. If you have any questions about these two problems or any other types of problems with, with the distributive property, drop them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys.